Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now going to answer question number five from the International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P4 paper from October 2022. This question here is about um, volumes of revolution. We're told here about this curve, uh, which is sketched, um, and the equation of the curve is given, and it's um, they're told about they told us about this region R, which is shaded, bounded by the curve, and the line x equals one over root two and x equals k, and also the x-axis. The region here is rotated about the x-axis. 360 degrees to form a solid of revolution, volume of revolution. Given that the volume of this solid is 713 over 648 pi, use algebraic integration to find the exact value of the constant k, okay, which is the, you know, the upper limit of this area. Now, volumes of revolution, what does that mean? Revolved around the x-axis. So here we have this region. I've just got a little uh, kind of copy of it down here. Now, if you were to take this shaded region, just imagine that this region was able to come out of the page and rotate all the way around. Okay, it would rotate all the way around. So this line, this whole region here, just comes out of the page at you and then goes all the way around and back down inside the page and goes all the way around 360 degrees around the x axis. So imagine your x-axis is over here, and the region is like this, and it just rotates around the x-axis, and it forms some sort of like a, you know a shape, a solid shape. So this this region, that shaded region, rotates all the way around. Okay, that is called the volume of revolution, right? The volume of revolution, and you can imagine that. You know, this is looking at it from like an angle from over here, for example. Now, if you can think about it, one of the what, what we have, what we the way we find the volume of revolution of this solid is we consider small kind of little sections inside this shape. So if I if I consider a small little kind of a slice of this area, a small little part of this area, say it's, it was over there. When that rotates round, that will form like a, a cylinder. Okay, the thickness of the cylinder would be this little value, which we call a small amount of x. And you can say the radius of that cylinder, the radius of that cylinder, okay, is going to be this, this length here, which is actually y. Okay, the y value of that point. Okay, so that's, that's like y. And that's like the x. So if you if if I just make a little sketch of the cylinder here, all right, we have this is y, and this is dx. So the volume of the cylinder is what we know. The volume of the cylinder is pi times the radius squared times the height. So in this case, um, the radius is the y value. So it's pi y squared, and the height is that small little part of x which we're going to call dx. Now, if I was to add together all the cylinders from the beginning to the end of the shape, from where we start, which is 1 over to k, okay, then that will give us, um, and I add all, those, all of those uh, cylinders together, that will give us the volume of the whole shape. That will give us the volume of the whole shape. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to basically... Um, find the sum of, and this is what the integral sign means, of pi y squared dx. So I'll write the pi outside as a constant of y squared dx. So I'm going to add that this, this will give us the sum of all of those cylinders from the beginning, which is 1 over root 2, up to the end, which is k. And that will give us the volume of the revolution of this shape. Okay. Now we know that y is equal to this 12 root x over 2x squared plus 3 to the power of 1.5. So I can now write this as pi. This is k, and this is 1 over the square root of 2. So we have, um, as we said on the top, is 12 root x 
So you have 12 root x over, and we have 2x squared plus 3 to the power of 1.5. 2x squared plus 3 to the power of 1.5. And all of that has to be squared, okay, and then integrate with respect to x. That will kill it. That, this gives us the volume of the shape, which we know is equal to this. So if we just simplify this a little bit, we can say now that, let me just put this out of the way. Just simplify this a little bit. We can say now that pi times the integral between 1 over root 2 and k of, we're going to have 12 squared, which is 144. So 144 and x root x squared, which is x over, and here we're going to have 2x squared plus 3 to the power of 1.5 to the power of 2. Now, 1.5 to raised to the power of 2 is 1.5 times 2, which is 3. So this is going to give me 2x squared plus 3 to the power of 3. Okay, integrated with respect to x. That's going to give me the volume of this revolution, which is given, they told us, is 713 over 648 pi. So that is going to give us the volume of, um, you know, revolution. So this is an equation now that we have to solve for k. We have an equation we've got to solve for k. When we integrate this and we substitute the values in, we'll have k as our unknown, and then we can solve it. Okay, so we need to take this, and of course, we need a bit more space. So we'll take this to the other side, and we will solve. Let me just get this. Okay, so I'll take all of this to the other side. Next page, copy, paste. Oops. Take it down there. Again. Better? Okay, so now let's move on with solving this. So I need to integrate this. Now, first sight, you might start thinking, how am I going to integrate this? Looks a bit strange, all right? However, what we can do here, we can see that here we have a term in x. And inside here we have, inside this thing, we have a term in x squared. So 2x squared plus 3. If I differentiate 2x squared plus 3, I'm going to get 4x. And here I have something in x, 144x. So I can see I have inside this function something which I differentiate. I'm going to get what's here, which is kind of like outside the function. So what I'll do is I'll rewrite this. I'll rewrite this so that it becomes clearer to us, so I have 1 over root 2, okay, I'm going to write this as 144x times 2x squared plus 3, write this in index form with this on the numerator, to the power of negative 3. So I have 713 over 648 pi. Now, something else I can do as well, by the way, I can get rid of the pi. Divide both sides by pi, that gets rid of that. But now, and now I see I have, like, I have two functions multiplied by each other. I have f of x times another function, g of x. However, I notice that inside this function, which is raised to the power of negative 3, I have something which is a, uh, another function. The differential of this function is actually multiplying the whole function. So if I... Well, it's not exactly, but it's the, it is the of the correct form. If I differentiate 2x squared plus 3, I get some term in x. So it's of this form. This is the form where we have um, something. If we recognize it like this, we can use the reverse of the chain rule. Now, this is of the form of the differential what's inside the function. I have a function inside a function, and multiplying it is a differential what's inside the function. So what I can do here is I can integrate this. So now I'm going to start integrating. So I'm not going to write my integral sign up or square bracket. I'm going to leave this as 144x, and I'm going to integrate this. How does it integrate? Well, you add 1 to the power. So it goes to power negative 2, and then you divide by the new power, which is negative 2, 
and then you also divide by the differential of what's inside the function, which is 4x. Okay, and then I have my limits of k and 1 over the square root of 2. And we know that that's equal to 713 over 648. We've got rid of the, the pi, as we said, from there. So now I have integrated this, but I'm just going to make it a bit simpler, of course. So I have 144, uh, well, the x cancels out, which is what we want. And then I've got the 144 divided by minus 8, okay, which is a negative 18. So I'll take out the negative 18 and write it outside here. And this gives me um, 1 over 2x squared plus 3 squared. And this is between k and 1 over root 2. And I know that gives us 713 over 648. Okay, just let me just make sure that's right. In case I wrote the wrong thing. Yeah, that's right. Okay, now. Um, now what we can do is we can um, substitute the values in. I can I can multiply by I can divide both sides by negative 18 first. I'll just write that over there in, in a second. So I have here um, one over two times k squared plus three squared minus one over. I'm going to have two times. Um, if you put minus one, if you put one over root two in here, that's going to become a half. Two times a half is is one. So one plus three, that's going to be one over sixteen. Just write it straight away. One over sixteen. That's going to be one over sixteen because that gives me one, because that gives me a half when I square it. Two times a half is one. One plus three is four. Four squared is sixteen. Okay, one over sixteen. Okay, equals seven hundred and thirteen over minus eighteen times. 648, I'll just write it like that for now. Divide both sides by negative 18. So now I have 1 over 2k squared plus 3 all squared is equal to 713 over minus 18 times 648 plus 1 over 16. Let me substitute that into here. Uh, let me just put that in my calculator and then work it out. So I have 713 over minus 18 times 648 uh, plus 1 over 16. See how that gives us something nice, is it? Okay, 1 over 729, that looks quite nice. So you have 1 over 2k squared plus 3 squared equals 1 over 729. Yeah, okay, good. So we can then say from here that 2k squared plus 3 all squared is equal to 729. And if I take the square root of both sides, I have 2k squared plus 3 is equal to, and the square root of 729, okay, I think that's 27. Square root of 729, yep, that's 27. Okay, so therefore I can say, I mean, I could say plus or minus 27, um, but I'm going to have to find what k is. And if I put minus 27, then I'm going to have k squared equals something negative, and I won't be able to find a value for k. So I'll keep it as positive 27, because um, I won't be able to, the, the won't, it won't give me a value of k at the end, right? Because I have minus 24, minus 12, k squared equals minus 12 will be undefined. So I'm going to keep it as. Uh, 27. So now I got 2k squared is equal to 24. And then I'm going to have k squared is equal to 12 divided by 2. So k is equal to positive or negative square root of 12. So we can say k is equal to plus or minus. Now that's root 4 times root 3, which is 2 root 3. Okay, now we know k is positive. How do we know k is positive? Because k is here on the positive side of the x-axis, as we can see from our diagonal. So we can say that k is positive. Okay, so we can say k is positive. Therefore, k must be 2 times root 3. So there's the answer to this question. Question number 5 from the October 2022 Pure Mathematics P4 exam. 
Um, I hope that was clear. Um, this, I think this was mentioned in the examining report that a lot of students didn't know how to integrate this. Okay, so this is something which we learn in P3 actually, which of course we need to know for P4 as well. And that is reversing the chain rule. Integration by uh, recognizing the reverse of the chain rule. All right, and um, it's something that we should know. So it's very important to practice such type of questions. So other questions from this paper can be found in the playlist that will appear at the end of the paper over here. Other questions from integration um, and volumes of revolution, right? So I'll put volumes of revolution here and just integration in general over there, two playlists, and you can then click on the link here to uh, subscribe to the channel if you wish to. Thank you for watching and see you soon.